The Mars 2020 mission, which includes the Perseverance rover and Ingenuity helicopter, launched from Cape Canaveral on July 30th, 2020, on an Atlas V541 rocket. This video will analyze launch data using graphical analysis and Newton's second law of motion. Before launch, the fully-fueled Atlas V rocket had a mass of 531,000 kilograms. There were two forces acting on the rocket when it was on the launch pad. The gravitational force is shown by the down-pointing arrow labeled FW for force of weight. The gravitational force acting on the rocket can be calculated using Newton's second law, which states that force is equal to mass times acceleration. Multiplying the mass of 531,000 kilograms by the acceleration of gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, gives an answer of 5,203,800 newtons. This is the force pulling down on the rocket. The second force acting on the rocket is the normal force, which is the Earth pushing up on the rocket. The normal force is equal and opposite to the gravitational force, and the two cancel each other out, which means that the rocket will not move. Upon the ignition of the rocket boosters, a new force begins to act on the rocket. The thrust force pushes up on the rocket. The thrust force is a demonstration of Newton's third law, which states that action forces are paired with equal and opposite reaction forces. The action force is created as the exhaust of hot gases are propelled downward by the rocket engines, and the reaction force pushes up on the launch vehicle. The thrust force of the Atlas V541 rocket is produced by the Common Core Booster, CCB, and four solid rocket boosters, SRBs. The total thrust is calculated by adding the thrust from the CCB, which was 3,827 kilonewtons at sea level, plus the thrust of the four SRBs, each providing 1,688.4 kilonewtons, for a total thrust of 10,580.6 kilonewtons. By subtracting the total downward force caused by gravity, 531,000 kilograms multiplied by 9.8 meters per second squared and divided by 1,000 to convert to kilonewtons, we see that the net force acting on the rocket is 5,376.8 kilonewtons in the upward direction. We convert this net force to newtons by multiplying by 1,000. We get an answer of 5,376,000 newtons. Since the total mass of the rocket at launch was 531,000 kilograms, we can rearrange Newton's second law to solve for acceleration. Solving for acceleration gives an answer of 10.1 meters per second squared. I'll add another video with more examples of how to complete Newton's law calculations using F equals MA and place a link in the upper right corner. The acceleration is very similar to the acceleration of gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, but directed up rather than down which means the rocket will accelerate up almost at the same rate that an object in free fall would accelerate down. As the rocket continues its flight, the forces acting on the rocket become more complex. There are four different forces acting on the rocket. These forces are thrust, lift, drag, and gravity. Analysis of the force, mass, and acceleration relationships at different points of the mission are further complicated by factors including the changing mass of the rocket as fuel is burned, the pitch-over maneuver which turns the rocket away from a completely vertical flight path, and increasing altitude which gradually decreases the strength of the gravitational force acting on the rocket. This graph shows a scatter plot of velocity versus time. All times are reported in seconds, and the velocities have been converted to meters per second. The first graph shows velocities from 26 through 290 seconds after launch. The slope of the line of best fit on a velocity versus time graph is the acceleration of the rocket. The graph contains regions where the slope changes, reflecting the fact that the acceleration of the rocket changes throughout the mission. Now I'll examine one of these time segments more closely by exploring the data from 60 through 90 seconds. I want to show you how to determine the acceleration of the rocket using linear regression. The first step is to select the data by clicking and dragging like this. Next I'll go to insert and select chart. I want a scatter chart, which is sometimes called a scatter plot. If you are doing your own analysis and the first chart you get is not a scatter chart, you can use the drop down menu under setup chart type to select the type of chart you want. For the analysis, I will now click on customize in the chart editor and click on series. This will display options where I can select to show the trend line on the graph. 
I want to make sure to choose linear because the acceleration is mostly constant during this short period of time during the launch. Then I want to select use equation and also show r squared under the label. The linear regression analysis gives a slope of 20.5. So this is the average acceleration of the rocket between 60 and 90 seconds after launch. The acceleration has units of meters per second squared. Dividing the acceleration by 9.8 compares this acceleration to the downward acceleration objects on Earth experience due to gravity. The result is 2.09, which means that if the rocket launch had been a crewed mission, the astronauts aboard would have experienced slightly over 3 Gs, approximately 2 Gs due to the upward acceleration of the rocket, and an additional 1 G due to the downward pull exerted on the astronauts by the gravitational pull of Earth. I hope this video was helpful. If you thought so, I hope you'll consider liking it and leaving a comment or question below. And if you want to receive notifications about new videos that I'm posting about science, NGSS, and the Mars 2020 mission, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell.